Welcome back to episode whatever four five. It's been two weeks though since we've done one because of everything that's going on. I think that it's just that's just our life. It's just chaos. We're gonna have to film more one time because we just literally have too, have too much going on. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I specifically had someone reach out. My hair is soaking wet. It is pouring outside, you guys. It's the rainy season. Um, I specifically had someone reach out and ask um, if we could talk about the hard parts of RV, like full-time RV, what it was like when we first started, and what it was like when we stopped. Um, so we'll kind of get into that. And then I'd like to kind of talk about... Um, what's going on currently in our world right now? Yeah. Um, Sad. With with sure. current events, so you can kind of go over that too. But I think we've never really spoken too openly about um, full timing, like the negative impacts, because I think that we were trying to spin such like a positive light on it because we got so much hate about it. Um, well, that and, we really couldn't share about the hardships. Well, and, and just being with our kids and stuff too. You don't want to be negative about. Yeah. But the, it, like in anything, though, there's ups and downs in anything. And I think right now. Do you guys hear Helen right now? Helen, chill out. <laughs> like right now, there's so many people online that are portraying this as like a. An answer to all your problems. Yeah. And that it definitely is isn't. Gonna, that's no. definitely. So, and it's not that we were like not, because I know that like through like Instagram stories and through some, you know, posts and stuff, we did share about like what we were going through. It just wasn't talked about a whole it's lot. It's still not in the community. And in it's that, not in that community. Because I can say that community because we're not in that community anymore. Yeah. I mean, just from like what I've seen. But if. But, so we started um, full timing almost seven years ago. Seven years ago, and that came after a very horrible time in our our life and our marriage. Which we had built a house, um, almost lost it, and we almost lost it. We were given bad advice. Uh, basically, we were told that building. at the end of it, he was like, "Take everything out of your retirement. Put everything on credit cards because it doesn't matter." At the end of this. You'll get it all back. You're gonna we're gonna wrap it all into your mortgage and you're gonna get it all back. And it's 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 totally fine. And so we did because that's what we thought um what was what we were Sound supposed advice. to do. It sounded we, we trusted them. And um at the end of the construction loan when we went to go put it into a we conventional went, loan. Went to go refi. And we had an appraiser come out, it appraised for almost a hundred thousand dollars less than what they said that it was gonna yes. appraise for. And then just to get it like do you not remember I I got the appraisal guy's personal personal number, which is like of, which of. actually so oops. Oops. But got his personal number was like listen here guy. Like this is a problem. This is a problem. You're about to make us homeless. And and then the and their finished, answer, remember their answer was finish the basement. Finish the basement. So then we ended up having to spend another fifteen thousand no, dollars. We it was like, it was like fourteen to fifteen thousand dollars to finish the basement so that we could throw bags. in two more bedrooms on it and another living room on it to try to get it to appraise for it. And it still didn't appraise. To where we could roll. To where we could roll everything in it, and it was awful. We had to sell our only car. Like it was like financially, just like a very very stressful time for us. And dream. And and so uh, you know we ended up making it work for a year and a half, almost two years. And then we. But you had always wanted to travel. Let's. You. No, I did. I did. Like you. Actually, before we bought that house, I wanted to travel. Part of us even yeah. building that house and moving over there, we're like, hey, quit your job. And I'm like, well, how are we going to afford to be on the road? Yeah. And then you're like, that's trouble for And I'm like, no. And so then. So we, then when that happened. Well, and then we got a taste of it too, because don't you remember we lived, you got a taste of it when you went down and visited your parents down in California that winter. Yeah. 
I and then and then we lived in the fifth wheel while right. we we're building the house. And then so we we're like, okay, this isn't, but I was still against it. Yeah, and then one because day because I was listening to so much again, bad advice, people saying, Oh, you can't do that, blah, 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 with all the with kids and stuff like that. And then I'll never forget, we probably said it before, but we're sitting on our back porch. Mm -hmm. I had just got home from the gym. I remember. And we're sitting there going, man, I'd like to do this in the backyard, this in the backyard, this in the backyard. And I'm like, we'll never get our money back. No, because of where that, I mean, now it is. Supposedly. Supposedly you can, but at that time, there that was, was almost no 10, comps that was seven years ago. in the area um, that said, if you put more money into this, then you weren't so going to we, get it. I just looked at so. it because I had been home for not even quite a year yet. It was about like six months. No, not even six months because we did it in September. So. Yeah, because then we ended up having that yeah, yeah. horrible real estate so, agent. So, yeah. So, home in April, we listed the house in September. He said, Right? Yeah. Yes. He said, What did you say? I said, Let's just get rid of it all and just go. My thought was to Airbnb. Remember? I was like, We'll just Airbnb every, we'll go month to month and we'll just Airbnb around the country. Could you imagine, since we did have to do that during oh, the seven God, years, could you imagine having to do that? That would have been... I would have been like <laughs> three months. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so and he turned to me and he was like, let's just sell it all. Let's just go. And I was like, done. And this was like after, you know, again, if we're being candid, you know, Brent was really hands off. I was the one that handled all of okay. our finances. I was the one that handled all of the back and forth with our lender, with the bank, with our um, builder. You know, all of the, all of the stuff. And it was just an insane amount of stress. And during that time, I was also um, building our business and um, growing it to, you know, sales of over a million dollars a year, a year um, at that same time. And so it was just like, I was done. I was ready for a break. And so for us, it, it wasn't was like an answer reset. to, it, it was, was a reset. It was a reset. It was something where like we needed to get out of Washington. You know, it was super toxic with my parents um, being there. There was no boundaries. There was no respect. Um, and honestly, it was a lot I, of shame. And I hate it. And Brent hated it. So for us, going full time was a reset. And it was kind of an answer to our prayer because we needed something different. So we ended up. Not being able to sell our house right away, which we thought so because we hired the worst real estate agent in Spokane. I will not say his name, but he was absolutely horrible. Brent ended up getting in like a full on like confrontation with him because he wanted us to take this awful, Just, horrible deal. Well, because we're about to be out of contract. Yeah, we were about to be out of contract and he wanted us to move our family out of our house, rent it to Some someone said for 90 days for three months. And then at that point, they would be able to choose if they wanted to buy it or not. And I'm like, where are we going to go? And he was like, you need to take this. You're not going to get it. Anyways, horrible real estate agent. Um, but then we ended up hiring this this lady who was a shark, and she sold it in a week. No, we had more showings we had more in two showings. days than this guy had in four Yeah, so we no, sold it. No, he didn't have it for three, three months. So Brent's idea was Airbnb, and, and then my idea was an RV because I wanted a safe place for us to be able to but come. Do you not remember when we started? We went from Airbnb to Airbnb. No, it wasn't we had, that bad. It really wasn't. We went from the Jan Hose. Well, to the Jan Hose were a safe place, and we needed yeah. them. But then, but then going down to Coronado was amazing. It was amazing, but I could see how it could get stressful, like packing everything up into our car with up all the van. Could you? Time. Did you remember packing? All of our children. I, I wonder if I could share a video like during this of us packing the maybe segue. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I mean it was that's... I couldn't imagine doing that. So, anyways, we went to, to Washington, met an amazing family or Western Washington. Met an amazing, met an amazing family, family. They're they're yeah, we love them. And then we went to California, and that was when I feel like um, we were able to just like breathe a little bit because it was like yeah, those, vacation. The, that week. I mean, the, that month in Coronado, besides the last 10 days when I was dealing with. Well, yeah. Also, besides the fact that it was $4,500 for the whole month. Yeah. But for I mean, a two bedroom. But do you not remember me 
on the phone with insurance. Yeah, trying to get one one like, thing that if you are planning on going full time, buy, buy the RV, RV before, before you, you sell leave. your house because uh, trying to prove residency, we definitely did some insurance fraud trying to prove residency. Whoa, stop! Um, to getting that uh, RV, we just added renters insurance on a house that we didn't live in. Yeah. Great. So we we got into the RV and then um, and we bought it in Valencia, California. Remember, Brent had never driven an RV before. No, I told towed a utility trailer. Okay, remember? he picked up our RV in Valencia, Which was California, total feet. and drove it for the first time in LA rush hour traffic. No, let's be honest. Down to Anaheim to Disney to Disney. And then I parked it for the first time. I had never uh, backed in an RV. And if you ever know, in the tiniest. So if you ever go to Anaheim and go in an RV, it's what was it? Anaheim Harbor. I feel like it had an orange in it. No, orange, orange was the other one. We went to. Oh. It was like Anaheim Harbor. It's like an RV park right by Disneyland. If you've ever been there, you know the spots are tight. Oh and my god! You park on a like this much. In concrete. Wood, concrete. You, you have, have to have get to your RV on. up on the concrete because then it dips is everywhere in between oh, each one of the concrete pads, so your your RV will go off. And then it. don't you remember we had no idea how to uh, level it, and I was using the stabilizers as the levelers. No, I never did anything on the outside. But, yeah, that. But anyway, so we we got the RV, and for the first year, I can honestly say it was vacation. It was vacation mode, but we also did not have any community at all i think and our biggest thing though we weren't look, to be honest we no we, you're right we, we were not looking for community we were just like more so focusing on us the kids and really we put a lot of focus back then on the business yeah. we really did like we stayed in I me mean, that year our first year we did we bounced around from Cal california arizona utah did we Vegas. go to Utah? Yes. Oh, yeah, we did go to Utah. You're right. So it was, it was, it was California, Arizona, Utah, Bay, Nevada, yeah. to California. And when we started, there was families that were doing it, but very, not like it is well, now. Let's be honest. Very few. Like Very, very few. Like, was, like, you could go to an RV park and probably count on two hands how many families were there. Correct. During, yeah, there like, was, that was full time. Right now on the weekends. Yeah, on the different. weekends there would be more, but like full time families, there was there was not a lot of options to choose from. So really like and we, we were, were focusing doing... on our family, we were focusing on the business. And then towards the end of the that first year, we met Marion and Buster, which were our campground grandparents, which we loved. Yep. Um they so took our kids in. They're amazing. Yep. And then I think we ended up meeting the Shears first and the Kennedys. No, we met yeah, the Dave's before that. Oh, the Dave's. Yep. Yeah, so it was the Shears, the Dave's, well, no, and then. Martin and, uh, oh, yeah. We did meet them. They were. So we had met like two families probably, probably within the first 10 months of us being on the road. Because realistically, when we hit the road, it was like we wanted to do, we were really big in. We, I mean, it was vacation mode, so we took kids to Disney all the time. Yep, we went and got annual passes for Disney. Um, we were at the beach. All the time. Yep. And then me and Britt would work at night. And then I think I think one of the reasons why we did want to like join a community was because we realized that we were going to do it longer than a year. Because I think it, after that winter, yeah, I think that we were like, this that, is awesome. That, we want to do this longer. I think it was that Thanksgiving, if I'm kind of quick for us, because what, what Thanksgiving would have been what month six? Because we hit the road in February, February. March, I think we. No, we left February, first week of February. Did we? From our house, yes. Oh, like from our years. house. Yes, yes. But like full timing, it was the end of April that we got the so, RV. Uh, May, June, July, August. Yeah. Seven yeah, seven months. We had been on the road, and I think, oh, it, you know what it was? It was um, Grandpa Lonnie came down and visited. Remember? Mm -hmm. And we we're kind of like, and then we started going well you had some people reaching out to you on instagram facebook and stuff we're like well how is it like full timing and then a couple people and that was when we really started like because before i had you know on instagram and facebook it was all about our business and like um the design of our house because a lot of people were with us when we designed our house and then 
we kind of we started, started getting a lot of people that were interested in, you know, the RV lifestyle. And so I was like, well, you know, I'm going to overshare. I'll share a little bit of this. Well, and I think too, though, you never, you shared to go in the, you shared to make sure that you were able to go look back at it. It wasn't like you were going, yeah, no, I I'm never... going to share this because I'm going to get X, Y, and Z out of it. Oh, I can honestly sit here a thousand percent and say that I never, ever started sharing our RV um, stuff in the means to make, make it, it a business, business yeah. ever. That was not what our purpose was. Yeah. And I Because really, we had a business that I truly, Yeah, us. exactly. And I truly don't think that a lot of the original people that started we're doing the same. They just wanted to share kind of like a scrapbook of like everything. A digital that, scrapbook. Yes, of everything that they have participated in. And so, and that is one of the differences that I feel like is different from people who started a long time ago versus those that ended up starting now. We, what I have tended, what I tend to see now is that people are starting it to become internet famous. They're starting it to basically so get clout and um, and it's a fad like for them are like, oh, I could get a lot of followers by doing this. And I'm not saying that their intentions are bad. are bad. I'm just saying that a lot of people are like, I'm going to do this and I'm immediately going to start a YouTube. I'm immediately going to start oh, an Instagram. I mean, how many times would you go? And TikTok. How many times would we go to fires and be like, oh, what do you guys do for a living? And okay, people would be like. So I wanted to talk about this because this is when somebody asked this. No, um, but no, I'm saying when we would meet people we because we had the business. Yep. And um, we'd ask people, like, oh, what are you guys going to do on the road? They're like, I don't know. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Well, a lot like, of people are like that. And again, I, I think that we noticed that, like, originally that people wanted it as a reset, just like yeah. we did. We would sit around fires, and they would be like, we just needed a break. Like, we needed to minimize everything. We needed to reset our life. Um, but the fires, I'm glad that you brought that up. Because I remember at, in the beginning, um, you oh, know... Boy. It wasn't about, you know, posting and tagging everyone. And, you know, it was truly about community. People, community. It was, I, it was only about like getting the in. fires, the family dinners that we had, like the get togethers that we had were about people who needed each other at that moment and they needed um, to be heard. Yeah. And that's what it was about. And then I feel like there what was a it? shift that happened about two years ago. Where it was like you would go to a fire where you'd meet people and everyone was a content creator. Everyone was being introduced by their Instagram names. Not their names. Not their names. It was their Instagram names. It would be know. their Instagram name and then be like, and my name is X, Y, Z. Yeah. And then it was all about, oh, I have to get this for content. I have to go here for content. And it wasn't about like healing. And I think like for me. Which is fine. Like if Again, you know, like, yeah, it's fine. I'm not saying that. Like, I think that it's different for everyone. And some people have gone into this and are like, yeah, I went into this for the sole purpose of growing, growing my business and and making money. But it was different for us. Yeah. And, and it became kind of like impersonal, I feel like, because every... It was a transactional... Every time that we would go somewhere, people would be like, are you going to tag me in that? Or, you know, like can I tag you in this or are you going to share this? And it just felt like it wasn't genuine. It was transactional. It was transactional. It was more like a business. And I think that for me, that was like, there was other reasons why we got rid of our thousand trails membership, but that was one of like, one of the biggest well, reasons why I was like, this doesn't feel like a family anymore community. It's changed completely. And it's fine that it's changed. But for me, like it was like tearing me apart inside. Well, it God, wasn't like it was. Is clicky very clicky very clicky yes. and i think which again if that's how you want to go at it that's how you want to go at it but for us the way we wanted to do this is we wanted to give our kids experiences that a typical person doesn't get and by doing that traveling was a thing like and again we built relationships that we could Honestly, go years, yeah, and just meet like up those and do first, those original and then, relationships. And then, sure. then too, it, like, like we have really good friends that we've met in the last year that were in the same mindset as us. Yeah, which was it, which is right now is a very 
unique situation because again, like Britt said, everyone's going into the RV thing as a creator, right? Creator, yeah. They're not going in it to um, enjoy traveling. Like they're just like yeah. everything I mean, is now, for the content. And now again, if that's your business, that's great. Like yeah. we we never went into it as a business, and. We had but it did end up turning into, into one. I well, want I want to reiterate yeah. that and like and but we the have reason been why that we are, are so blessed, blessed to well, have the reason it with did people. too though is we had a friend reach out to us and was like, "You guys should be making money doing this." Mm. And we were like, "What do you mean?" They're like, yeah. "I mean, we did so much stuff for free, do you remember?" And that and so was much it, stuff was, for free. I told you. I think it was Liz. Liz like looked at Britt and was like, you guys pretty much are dumb. Like you should be yeah. making money. Cause then she told us of another person that was in the community that was doing it, that was making substantial, a lot of money. And we're like, oh. And that was actually around the same time that I was letting my other business go. And I was like, all right, well we can just transition into this. And so I'm not, again, I'm not saying that it's bad to do that at all. Like if that is your intention to do it, I think that that's awesome. I think, though, that there is a mass exodus of people that are leaving the RV community for a few different reasons. The first one is it is insanely expensive. Like, it well, is so much more expensive now than it, it was depends on, like, when how we first people, started. So, like, that's my biggest thing, too, is telling people, like, if you're not doing the membership stuff. Oh, my gosh. It, how can you afford it? Like. I was talking to my dad about this, who like, was talking about it. Because. You can't. It's a $1,000 Plus for an RV payment, thousand around a thousand for a truck, truck payment, and then you have up to two thousand dollars a month to stay at. And places. we stayed, and this is the thing: to each of their own, right? We stayed at nicer parks be, the last two and a half years because of experiences we had at other resorts. Memberships, yeah, memberships, and we just didn't want to do that anymore and it for us it was just knowing that the safety of our children yeah. and our stuff i right. mean we were working with a company where we didn't want anything to happen to our rv to our truck yeah. to our car right to our children like it was just for us we just thought and what we were able to see too when we stayed at a lot of the private resorts is the community that we wanted yeah it was like you would meet people and they but were. But that just, kind of came with a cost. Yes. And it came with a substantial. Like we did the last really week. Expensive we cost. did We did the budget. Like when we looked over our finances the last year, our monthly like finances, like living finances was equivalent to a $500,000 house. Yeah. So. And, then, and so then you have to reevaluate. You're like, well, should I. But we never went into more? it to save money. We never no, went we into it. No, we didn't do that. No, so. you're right. We didn't we didn't go into it to save money. But what I was saying was it's extremely expensive. The market shifted a oh thousand gosh. percent when COVID happened. The, RVs. the um RVs shot up in price, the RV park shot up in price, gas diesel shot up in price. Yep. And so it is substantially more expensive now to do this than it was. Oh and God. I think I think a lot of people we made it so popular, those that have pushed it. That people are like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I'm going to fill my campground to 70% even yeah. when I'm charging this much. So you have that. Um, so it's super expensive. And then the other thing that I've heard from people who have traveled or started traveling in the last few years is that they literally can't find a community. And we get that all the time. We like, get we that all the time. time. And like, again, again we're like coming back to what we were talking about before, I truly believe that it's because so many people have gone into this in the last two to three years trying to make it a business they're trying to do it for content and and not for like the community that it is or that it could be yeah like when we were doing it it really felt like a traveling neighborhood it did you know like especially during like the COVID. winter and well, think about COVID. yeah in, in florida it was amazing yeah. think we, about covid though when everyone we had three families that we traveled with for yep three months yep our kids had kids to play with. All the time. And we had our friends that we were traveling with, and we would be able to park our houses our, yeah. right next to each other. And we were exploring new states and new cities and all these new things. Um, and it was it was amazing. It truly was an incredible experience. But I did notice, 
you know, especially being at the resort that we were in the last two years, that it just, it just shifted. Yes, we had friends and we had community in the last couple of years, but it was just different than what it was when we first started. I mean, if you full-time now, go sit outside in your RV for like an hour or two and see how many people walk by with a selfie stick. Yeah. Something on their on their yeah. bike. Yep. Or something along a drone. Yep. Like, it's just, and again, to each of their own. But like, when we first started, that was never a thing. That was like, no. if someone was doing that, like, you're like, oh, they're just probably documenting where they're at. Like, yeah. Do you remember when we did, um, we filmed Real Housewives of the RV Resort And people Liz, were watching. And people like, were like, like that, that was, Liz, uh, the days, the runaway parents, when we first started hanging out, and Nicole was in it. Yep. And the Shears. Um, but when we first started hanging out, we're like, because this community is so small, we should film, like... Real Housewives of the RV Park yeah. and like make a, a thing about like it. And we spoof. did. And people were looking at us like we were insane with like, yep. Liz came from, um, she had all the equipment. She had come from production. So she had everything. And she was the one that set up all the GoPros and did all the lighting and everything. And, um, and we just kind of like acted with her. But now, now you, oh it's gosh, not unusual to, to walk by and see someone doing it. And again, I want to reiterate we also did that the last few years. Like we also went into that where we were filming a lot, but, but I think again, going back, our intentions like were to make memories with our kids and we were wanting to document it. And I did want to document it. Like our kids truly love looking back at all of the reels oh that gosh. I've created. Or even just the picture. And like, I remember this. I remember that. Like, that was so fun. Like this was amazing. Um, but it's just like not going into it. If I could encourage you guys, if you're going to do this is not going into it with the intention of like, I'm going to make all this money as a content creator, um, and an RV influencer type of a yeah. person, like go into it with like the intent of, I want to spend time with my kids. I and want to show it. them, it, uh, yeah, it. show them things that I've only read about in books. And, um, and, and I want to spend time with these families and then learn when to like, to turn it off and to not have that be like your ultimate goal. Like it just saddens me. And I talked about this with a few friends, um, when we would sit around the fires in the last year, the last year that we were in it. And we would ask, like, what are you doing? Or where are you going this one time? They're all like, oh, we're going here because we have to get content with this fairy that's super rare. And we have to go get content in this state for this. Yes. And it's like, you're not just going because you want to see it and you want to experience it. And it was always about creating content that you hope would do well on yes. YouTube or TikTok. So that just, like, made me sad. And it just because, like, we had had such a different experience at the beginning of it. I think, well, the first three and a half years. And I think, too, I think for everyone that had started pre-COVID. Yeah. Um, with the cost increase was just, oh, my gosh. It was such a, like, our first year and a half, two years, our average cost at night was, like, $25. Oh, yeah. And now it's, like, 75 for a Well, that was just based off of, you field. Know. So... Looking back at it too, like kit costs, which it was fine, we whatever. But then now, with the like for us, the last two years too, we had a lot Should of. Should we kick Helen out because she's snoring? Or drunk and sick. Oh my gosh, gosh where Helen. are you? She's over there. She is. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. She is. Helen, yeah. She. You scared her. Anyways, so. Um, so yeah, so I, I mean, I, and with, it was just crazy too, because the last two years that we had some, uh, stuff going on with the truck, which then we ran into the whole supply thing, which then yep. sucked. So then we were just well, and getting stuck in places that you're not familiar with. I mean, that was incredibly stressful when our truck broke down in Iowa oh and gosh. we, they like, seriously, they, we were so blessed to be with another family that was able to pull our RV because we broke down. We and, broke down at a casino. Parking. We pulled into a casino parking lot and our truck, there was no power, power, no power at all. It had to get towed. And, um, 
but but being in an area that we were not familiar oh. with where we knew absolutely no one where we had to trust reviews or the tow truck driver. or tow truck driver um of where we should go and then scrambling on a weekend to find a spot to stay holiday. a holiday weekend what was it labor day yes Oh Maybe Memorial. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. It was in September, yep. Yeah. Trying to find a spot and then having to move it but not having a truck. Yep. So then you have to figure out, like, are the you going to have someone else to move it? And and is it going to get done? And then having to find someone to take it. Like, that was so difficult because, like, when you grow up somewhere, like, you're familiar with the area. You're like, oh, I know that this shop is really good. Like, I know that this is well, a safe, kind of like how a it's safe now. area. Just how it is now for us. Like, yeah, really like, I'm, I'm familiar with the area. I know where to go. But when you have, like, medical issues and, um, you know, problems with your motorhome or your truck, and you're in an area that you're not familiar, it is a level of stress that I cannot well, explain. Like, it is so scary well, and, and you don't know, like, you, like our, do you not remember our truck sat for five weeks, five weeks, five weeks. Yep. And we were in the Midwest and let's just say, I hope to God this never happens to anybody. If you've ever break down the Midwest during college football season, a rental car is not cheap. Oh yeah. We spent, I mean, a thousand dollars a week. Yeah. We spent $12,000 in one month to, um, get our truck fixed. And for Airbnbs and for uh, rental cars, um, it was five grand over five grand. For and that was us getting an Airbnb that was an hour and a half away from where we needed to be because we couldn't pay for do one that was remember, closer. Do you not remember us having to drive all around Michigan and Indiana mm -hmm. to find rental every cars? week to get? There a was rental one car. time where we couldn't get a rental car. I had a Turo, a Mustang, for three days. That didn't that like a two door Mustang. Yeah, well, all Mustangs are two doors, babe. Sorry. Got a Mustang to where, I knew that. <laughs> to where um, we had to tell the kids, like, hey, y'all staying at the Airbnb. If mom or dad has to go grocery shopping, you ain't coming. Yeah. Because we're right? stuck. Yeah. But And then don't you remember we drove, we drove all, all the way up into Michigan and we got there and they were like, oh, we don't have the rental car. Yeah. And the lady was like, tough. Yeah. And it was on a Sunday. Yeah, and then we went to the airport. Yep. Remember, we had to drive all the way to Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. Which was, what, hour and a half, two hours away? Oh, God, you're literally giving me anxiety right now. Like, I'm going to start getting heart palpitations just thinking about that. All right. We'll change. Anyways. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, there, so but, again. There was amazing times. And I, mean, and I would do it all over again. I would, I, would. I, mean, I would do it now. I would do it all over again. And I would do, would I do it again? Yeah. And when, how would I change it though? I would probably go into it knowing the financial is going to break. Well, in the financial ram, ramifications of yeah. it too, because like it's not cheap. Like no. if especially I was telling someone this last week when we first started. Remember, the longest we were ever in one location was three weeks. Yeah, for two years. For two so years. that just think about that. We were constantly going beam, 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 like everywhere, all over. So I couldn't imagine. And what was gas at that point? Because we had not that meat. much. Because remember, it was, it was like, like in the two dollar range. No, we were in California. It was in the high threes, low fours. Okay. And I remember, um, back then, going, man, this is so expensive. Because remember, we're spending like over. You did it to us because you were like, "This is expensive," and then God was like, "You ain't seen nothing yet, boo." But remember, like we were in California that winter, and I was like, "Man, we're spending like twelve hundred dollars on gas because we would." I mean, again, we we stayed in the Temecula Menifee area. Oh, that's when we were going down to um, Pio Pico and to, um, and Wilderness. And then we're like, we need to stay closer. So then we started paying for Lake Skinner for yep. a week out. And then because the fuel cost was like, I mean, for us to drive the NV towing the van, it was like $100 to get down to Pio Pico. Yep. And then I was like, we can just pay that and go. And then like, we didn't right? have internet. Oh my gosh, and couldn't have, people. didn't have cell phone service. Oh my gosh, and it just made me remember. You probably do love that. It just I reminded me, oh my that gosh. We, we had good memories there. Do not remember. Do you remember when um, Riley locked it? That's what I was just <laughs> So, funny story, we get to this, this part. This is not a, I mean, I guess it is funny it, now. Looking back at it. It is funny now. We had, I was, when we first started, I was like, I gotta watch my Seahawks. 
I got it. So we got oh, dish. Oh, how times have changed. So we got dish, like, dirt, was it direct TV? Yeah. And I carried a satellite on a tripod. Oh. And we'd get to these campgrounds, <laughs> and I'd be, like, out there, like, Doing it for hours, for hours. moving it, trying and to find where the satellites were. Britt was in the RV and she's like, Oh, we got it. And then I'm like, Okay, well, then she needed to go to the grocery store. I, had, the I way, had to go to Costco. By the way, dead of summer, hot as Hades. Oh, yeah. Dead of summer, probably close to 100 degrees, if not hotter. Yep. So she goes. So I go and turn the van, van on to get the air conditioning. And at that on. time, this is our first year. So Riley. I had to oh my have been, gosh, she she's was 12 now, so she was eight or nine. Eight. No, she, eight? she wasn't. Moo was like. Oh, so she was like seven. seven. Oh my gosh, wait, no. So she Moo was Molly's age. Roll back. We did it almost seven years. Riley's 12. She was six. Six or seven. Yeah, no, she was six. And I'm like, dude. And dude. she wanted to come with me. And then, but the caveat to all this is Riley goes in the van, locks the door. And then I'm taking forever to help Brent get his satellite set but up. the RV's locked. Remember we were locked out of RV too? No, we weren't. Yes, you we just were. made that up in your Weren't head. we all locked out of RV no, too? I was in the RV trying that's to help That's right, you. that's right. And then you cut your hand. Remember? I did cut my hand, but not that day. Yeah. So then we get... I cut my hand really bad, yeah. and you made fun of me. I needed stitches. You're such no, you a breath. So then, so the car is literally running. We have no cell service, so I can't call... No cell phone service. So I can't call locks. Zero cell phone service. So I'm like, I had to hike down the road, call our insurance, because we have roadside. So, I, I, back up. The car is on. It's like 100 to 105 so degrees running. outside. It's running. Idle. And now it's running. locked. It's idling. We gas is ex well, gas it's all perspective, but gas, is ex gas was expensive then at the time, so we have no service to call a locksmith. So you had to what walk a mile down the road, and it was oh my god, you were such a salesman! No, I had it to, it was be not that far. You had to walk down to the east section, and then you didn't really get service there. You had it for a little bit, you talked and to them, and then lost it, and then you had to walk up the little hill where the chair was where everyone walked to try to get cell phone service and sat there. Well, we ended how up calling. We, how did we end up getting a hold of that one locksmith? Because remember, progressed. listen, this is what happened. Because obviously, you have created yeah. a story in your head. So we ended up calling. I think it was Progressive. That was our insurance. Yes. No, it was AmFam at that time. You're right. It was AmFam at that time, and they were going to send someone out. Well, they said he they walked were... back. They said that they're sending someone out. He walked back. Hour goes by. No, no one's, one's there. there, and so he's like. Okay, I'm going to have to walk back and try to call them. Walks back, tries to call um, AmFam again, can't get a hold of them. Um, end up getting a hold of them after like another 45 minutes. They're like... So almost two hours now. We don't have anyone that can come out there. You're, you're out of the... You're, cause we're you're out of wherever we're at. And we're pretty normal, obviously. We have no cell phone service. And so um, they don't, they can't call anyone. You know what it was? And then the maintenance guy drives by. So then the mate, yep. So then he walks No, back. I walk up to the front and go, do you guys? And then the ma they're like, oh, the maintenance guy might be able to do something. The maintenance guy comes over. He starts working on it for like he an hour. He cuts the car off. No, he cuts. Remember, he got the hood to pop open and then unplugged the but back. But this was after like Two three, hours. No, it was two and a half hours. It was longer than that. Because we had burned through over a quarter tank. It was that. like three, three or four hours that the car had idled, I remember. And so he ends up figuring out how to like disconnect. No, he popped the hood and just, we just pulled the battery. The battery. It didn't turn off, remember? Yes, it did. It, just, it didn't. Yes, it did. We disconnected the battery and then it turned off. And then, remember then the... The Could dash. Neither one of us. The dash lit up like story. So we're just making it up as no, we, we go. Then the dash lit up. Remember, then we got into the, the lock. Then he was like, "Well, I'll call a buddy who's a locksmith." That's how we ended up getting the locksmith. Yeah. So then, then the locksmith comes out, someone. and then because remember when he pulled our battery, he said, "Dude, your dash is gonna look like Christmas because it's gonna be all lit up. You're gonna have all these check engine lights on because we disconnected the battery when it was running." Right. So then, so I'm like. But he's like, do you want me to do this? And we're like, uh, yeah, it's just running. So then he calls his buddy. Who took like another hour to come out. And 
At this time, me and Brick have almost killed each other. Which is not the first time and definitely won't be the last. And then, so we're like, <laughs> yeah, we're just yelling at each other. We're, and then we're like, hot. Our RV. Oh, and by the way, Brent missed the Seahawks game that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, when was it? So then he comes, pops it open. probably lost. Pops it open. And then it was like, we popped it open, got the keys out, and then Britt starts the car, and then, like, all the check engine lights on, and I'm like, no, we just destroyed our only car. Yeah. And then, of course, it reset itself. It reset itself. But then it was like, after that, we always, like, the joke is now, if the car's running, do not touch the doors. Yeah, we learned our lesson. That day, that was a very again expensive. A stressful, and an expensive day. Expensive day, yeah. We had to pay him and bookmark. That's a bookmark. So, but now looking back at it, it was funny. Is like, could you imagine being an outsider looking at us? Oh my gosh, that poor maintenance guy. Yeah, he was. He was. A, he was amazing though. Remember, he was like, "I got. I'll help you. I'll help yeah. you." But anyways, that was. We just went on tangent there. But yeah, like so it was. But it totally. There was definitely a lot more of times that were like that. And again, I think it goes back to what I said was that when you don't, when you're not familiar with the area and you, you don't, don't know, know anyone, um, you kind of have to go based off of who you contact first, yeah. like, you know, reviews and, and all and that. that. Is one thing I would suggest if you do, um, full time, go on Google. And read the reviews. And read the reviews, yeah. And just we got burned. Pray. Oh my gosh, our first year we got burned so many. Do you not remember alcohol? <laughs> we paid. So Britt had business in San Diego, and San Diego was stupid expensive even back then to stay at. Not before because there was only like two. Yeah, it was like two grand. Yeah, for like two weeks, it was a grand a week. Yeah, and was, back then that was stupid expensive. That was yeah. So we found this one. I'm sure now it's like four grand. We found this one. It was a big resort. I just bought a big company. had just bought this resort. And the pictures online looked amazing. Do you not remember the pool? Of That's food? because they used pictures yeah. from a different resort. So we paid whatever we paid. Could, do you remember driving? Like Oh, so yeah. Like so we pay what we pay. And we get to this gate. Do you not remember? It was this chain link fence. It's and a chain link fence. And, and there like, are literally oh. cars everywhere. And the road is like this. And this was probably, what, the fourth time? No, third time I towed it? Yeah. And and there are, are I mean, cars everywhere. Road, and everyone lives there. There is dilapidated trailers no, everywhere. it wasn't even dumb. Condemned. They were drug freaking Yeah, meth. Like, you go and there's, like, a, a, a thing from the city that says, this is the, condemned. Well, the city, and it was like, getting towed. the sheriff department's going to be picking. And two of them got picked up while we were yeah. there. So, I'm like, but I'm like, dang, we we have to stay We here. tried to get our money back. It was $500 like, no, for the week. it was 685 Why yeah, do I don't remember? I don't know. know. Oh, because I, no, because I remember, because you were like, go in there and tell them you want your money back. And I was like, okay. And the lady's like, no. Nah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, we didn't have. We weren't in a position to just throw $700 away. So I was like, okay. So then we park it. Do you remember this? So I park it. It's hot. Didn't something get stolen the very first day that we were so there? So I'm parking it, right? And I and we had a a travel trailer. So you had the pry bar. Yeah. No, you had the, I'm sorry, equalizer hitch. So then you have like a pry bar to help pull it off. Well, I'm doing it. And I have my routine. I put that in. The kids needed something. I went in the house to yeah. help you. And then I come back out, I'm setting all up, and then I'm like, where the heck is my pry bar? Someone had freaking stole my pry bar. Yep. And so I was like, son of a... So then I walked down, because there was like a nice, remember the nice fifth wheel that was like four down from us? And he was a, he worked, he was a, uh, a Marine. No, he was a him, Navy SEAL. I remember him being a Navy SEAL, but I don't remember what he had. He had like a big fifth wheel, like four spots out from him. So I went down there, he was out. I became friends with him, I was like, hey... This is kind of a sketchy part. Mm -hmm. Can you, we're going to be gone during the day. Will you just, I've already had something stolen. Can you please just look over our rig? Because he worked at night. Remember? Yes. And he was like, hey, as long as you just look over mine at night, just peek out there periodically. I'm cool. I'll, I'll keep an eye on yourselves. I'm sweet. So do you not remember? We literally set up 
like as fast as we did we could mm -hmm. and they got the heck out of dodge and we just left our rv and we're all always gone. gone always gone and yeah we, we went and did business do you not remember i dropped you off and yeah. i was like i'm not staying there with the kids so then we went to we just hung out in coronado yeah which because we were which was probably like 25 30 minutes away so every day we just drove out and then we got freaking ants that was the first ants time we got ants. ants so basically what had happened it was a sun outdoors that bought it and um they had used images from like one that was down the road and we drove down there to look at that that one was it was and it was nicer but it was tight it was super tight super when, super tight and all the people had lived there so like no one moved their rvs no remember? they were no. just like they right so, so they had like, they had basically used the pictures i'm assuming what had happened was is that they probably had just bought that part no they did remember they said it was and the they were going to clean it up well that's right but they out. had it yet and so we just happened to get it in a crappy week in a crappy week that they or a month hadn't bought it so or hadn't cleaned it up yet so but so but there's definitely a lot of Google times be, that we Google have done be. that where we think that it's good based off of pictures we did that twice but it's completely different once you actually get to the park. twice we did that twice we learned after a second time then we were like google review google review yeah. google review so. so i mean going back to the whole full timing it's just different now it's and those that have started in the last like year or two don't know any different and it's great for them you yeah. know like they this is what they set out to do this is what they wanted to do like you know it's no different they don't they don't run they don't you know are, the, the cost difference because they didn't experience they what it was like seven Probably. years ago well and i think too you are seeing another transition where you're seeing less families again yeah i mean there is a mass exodus of people leaving mm -hmm. i i cannot believe the amount of people that write me daily um saying that they're selling their rv and yeah. that and and i'm still in a lot of like the groups on facebook the full-time groups and it is literally like i'm so in my rv after rv after rv and tons like it, it seems like every other day because i'm in some pretty big groups where they're like is there a reason why everyone is leaving this and like am i missing something and um and again i think that it comes down to it's extremely expensive um and and the community there is not well, and, the same type of community that there was before it is so much harder for people to get connected um with people unless you're in like a click yeah and for us too we always said after our first year because i thought when we were going to go into this gonna be a year one and done like that's what my mental capacity was, was like one year but after that, we always, as a family, decided once one person, one person spoke that they were done doing it, we were done. Like, we were never going to. That was me. Well, Mackenzie really started. Yeah, but she's the one that is coming to me lately saying that she misses it. See. So. But Elliot and Riley both. Elliot, I think, was the one that was like the most done because he just wanted. So Elliot's very similar to Brittany, like social wise. She need, he needs to be around people, mm -hmm. and I think the inconsistency of um, his wow. friends, his friends. Well, again, if you go back when we first started for the so first yeah. two to four years, we were traveling with and then multiple stopped. different families. And then, we were always with their friends. They yeah. were all, they were, they did school in the morning and then they played all afternoon. We were, it was very rare that we were at somewhere where they were not constantly with their friends. And I think too though, but they're at the age now where they want to do activities. Like yeah. our boys now are showing they interest do sports in sports. And stuff. Our girls are doing the same thing. And like our daughter now, Mackenzie, and there'll be probably some flag to this. But our daughter wants to go to homecoming, wants to go to dances. And people say, well, you can do that on the road. Can you? You can. And, see, can you, and you can play sports on the road. But also. But you're stationary for months You're prior. stationary. And it is so difficult really unless traveling? you're familiar with the area. Like, you have to basically be connected to that area. Yeah. Or really like want to be been, in that area. Like we would have been where we're at now. Because we had stayed here right. two winters in a row. Right. We had made some friends. The kids had made some friends. But, again. That's the thing. You would have to still be somewhere stationary. For at least six months. 
depending on the sport yeah. or activity. And then you're going to pull them out. So sport. then, so then for us, when we started realizing, especially the last two winters that like, we started liking having the routine. Of, we did. Of like, oh, Costco, it was nice. we could go there, we could do this. Like we had like this, like home. Like it was, I mean, our home was always and, there. And that's what, and I think that's the thing. It felt like home when we were at Margarita's all the last two years. Like I was like, this is the most at home that I have felt since basically we started. But then it was like, but we then lived we in 400 leave. square feet. And then we leave. And then we left. And it was hard because be the kids were like. For six months. Yes. And the kids, they're like, well, we're all sharing this room. Like if we're going to be stationary. We, we might as well just get into a house where we have a little bit more space. And then, yeah, so I enjoy having a house. I love having... We're getting another RV. A home base. But yes, I was just about we, to say that. We're getting another RV. There are now times be- where every single one of my kids has come up since we've stopped that said, I really miss X- traveling. Y- I really right? miss going to Utah. I really miss going to New York. I really miss going to South Dakota. Like they're, they're like, we still want to travel a little bit. And so, and so do I, like, I love being able to have the flexibility. But I do love. Of being able to go. Sit in our living room. But I do love sitting in our living room and our swimming pool. And I love having all the kids. I mean, I'm not loving our car. Right now. No. That's another. So. Yeah. But. It's like getting kicked in the nuts every day. Every but I think that it's, I think that everyone. I mean, it's there's, 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 there's no, a time and a place for everybody. Yeah. And, and we were there at seven years. That was it's important to understand that, like, not everyone is going to do a full-time RV for six, or, seven and years. And they all do it different. Some people are just going to do it for six months or a year. Or maybe they're just going to, you know, have a home base and have their house and then go out for be sometimes. a month or two and, and go with friends. That's okay. Like, you can however it works. Just make some time in. Not full time. You want to you want to trademark that, huh? Sometimes. Some timing. Sometimes. Not full timing. Not part timing. Some timing. Some. That's Brett's. Yeah. We're just gonna. That's, Put that up there. Yeah. Um, but you can do it in all different ways, and again, so I, I have loved what we had, and I loved the community that we had. Um, you know, originally we didn't really get to travel with them the last two years, which was really sad and and, and hard on us. Um, and I mean, just people had to pivot too, like, yeah. cause the cost went up. So the a lot of people up, had to pivot. Their- I can't tell you the amount of people in the RV community that are struggling financially. Like it is, there's a lot of people who they had all of these problems come up and it is like, it's, it's unexpected. You're already working remote. You're already trying to, um, to basically, create income for yourself on the road and then you have a five thousand dollar bill come up for a truck or uh you know you have to take your rv in to get fixed and you have to pay four thousand dollars for an airbnb and a rental car and it is very difficult to get caught back up again and so again like what, what brent said if we were to ever go into it again, we would go into it with the mindset like this is going to get expensive at some point. Like this, you we are have going good, to have yeah. issues at it, some point financially. I think we were spoiled also the first. Well, yeah, we had no problems. Four years? Literally none. First four years on a road, not one blow up tire. Nothing. nothing. Actually, we never had a blow up tire. Like, kudos to us. There was I never a huge use us. OCD. Yeah. Okay. But anyways, like, I think, too, we just want to put it out there, too, because there's so many people out there now that are like, this is the end-all, be-all. You're going to save so much money, blah, 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 which you can't. I mean. No, you can. There's places. Remember when we are in Texas? You can stay $400. In the middle of nowhere. That was in Waco. Waco is a very poor area. But you get what I'm saying. Like. If you are going to go and travel, especially with the way fuel prices are, everything along lines like that, it's expensive. Yeah. There's no other way to sugarcoat it. And that's why I just wanted to put it out there because we get DM'd, whatever you want to say, all the time of like people like going, how did you afford to do this? 
Yeah. Like I was just talking to someone two weeks ago, that couple that was staying at Margaritaville, that was like, our bills are 10, they were like, my bills are $10,000 a month. She was like, That's what I'm saying. She's like, how are people posting that they're spending $2,200 a month? Well, they have a used or or paid off RV or a older older truck or paid off truck. truck. They um, are staying with memberships like Thousand Trails memberships, which have already been paid for. And then they're not doing anything or moving. (laughs) Yeah. But like she straight up, she said to me, she's like, how, and she, cause they have four kids and they're like, how are you guys? How did you? And I was like, it ain't she. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I know, but for them, they needed to do it because her husband's a, was a, a traveling welder. Oh. And she was like, I don't, we do this or we don't see my husband. Yeah. So I was like, well, I don't, I didn't realize that we were going to talk about this far now. That's fine. So guess we won't be talking about current events and all that stuff. We can save that for the next one. Also, my nose tickles really bad. Don't pick it. I keep, like, doing this. You guys are probably like, why is she picking her nose? The inside of my nose tickles so bad right now. I don't know. All of them. Is it, like, the weather? Like, it what is, is it? The, is it the microphone that's doing this? Is it electric I don't know. It just, like, it's tickling. Anyways. I don't know. Um... But so yeah. yeah, that's the negative part of um, RV, and that's my take on why. I think that's that our take. That's not our, the end all be. Our all. take on why I think people are leaving. Again, other people can have different experiences and perceptions of what is happening, and that's great. That's just personally that's the pro pause opinion. opinion and what we noticed um, in our circle or in our our group. So other people can have different experiences and. It's it's different for them, and that's great. Like, and to each other. Own. Good good for y'all, and I'm happy that you love it so much, and it's working for you. And like again, we and would, I wish you the best. I mean, we'd success. probably still be on the road if you weren't done, or Mackenzie wasn't done, or Elliot. If they could just make an RV that was like three bedrooms and not a loft where you can't sit up. It yeah, they do. They call, I, I would called, still travel for a called, lot of the They're year. called uh, spacecrafts. Isn't that the really high, high end one? You have to have the semi to tow it. Remember we saw oh, it? Oh, yeah. And there's like 13 slides. It weighs like 30,000 pounds. <laughs> yeah, you come into there and people would be like, oh, look at those snobby rich yeah, people. That was a million dollars. <laughs> Your setup's like 1.2. Like, yeah, we're roughing it. But okay, really quick before we hop off. If you had $1.2 million and you had the option of a really sweet VA motorhome or fifth wheel to spend on it or a house, which one would you do? I'm asking. Multiple houses. Oh. At 1.2, right down here, we could buy probably three houses. Mm. So you and then like I could go and then I could go buy and an RV. So check this out. You could go buy three rentals down here where we're at now. Okay. I could go buy a brand new truck and a new fifth wheel, and we'd be still fine. Smart. Residual income. Or is that residual? Passive yeah. income is Passive. what I meant. Residual is MLM. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Um we're yeah, we talked to about change. that today because I again you get I, had, all the time about I had someone specifically reach out. Her and her family were thinking about going, and she feels felt like it's just all this like positive stuff, and she wanted to see kind of like the negative side to it. Well, and um, we get, in our take, and we get written all the time about it. Like, just be honest. Like, it happens all that people are like, why don't people talk about this, or why don't people share about this? Before? And again. I, like I said in the beginning, I think that a lot of people don't share the negative stuff because once you do share on social media and you open that up, oh my gosh, there is so cannot. much hateful comments that come through, we'll and they are just it. waiting for you to post something. We'll and be like, I told you so. We'll get it on this. Oh yeah, and it'll be and it'll be from our viewers, and yeah. it will be from non our viewers, and it'll just be like. You're stupid. And I and I told you that this would happen, and, and obviously and then you'll get this the is the this. And then you'll get the RVers like, you guys are lying. It's not like that. Yeah. And again, like it could not be like that for them. 
again, it's all about your perspective and, I think, and your opinion. So maybe it's not like that. And honestly, too, it's probably because of, I hate to say this, their status on social media. Like if, like it is what it is. Like if you have a lot of, I hate to say this, but like a lot of followers or whatever that means nowadays or whatnot, yeah. like it's the experience because that is what it, it I mean. You're it, selling an idea. Go to, I'll end on this. If you really don't think that what we're saying is true, go to an RV show and I'll end it there. <laughs> I know where you're going with that. Go to an RV show. <laughs> We're not going to go any more into that because we'll just leave that to the imagination. Anyways, guys, we'll catch you next week. Actually, we're probably going to film it tomorrow because if I don't. And our week is nuts. I think we're doing Disney next week. I think. But we it's going to be in the 70s we got next some week. Cool fall I'm weather. As low as the 50s, and I cannot wait. Oh, here, come here. I'm you so want to make an appearance since everyone knows you? Come here. Snoring like a drunken sailor. Come here, Helen. Oh my gosh, the kid. Say hi, Helen. Oh, she's making her. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Did you? Helen. And she was done too. She, she was like, she I need it. RV. She was like, I need a couch to lay on. No. She, her favorite thing was oh laying my. outside the RV underneath, underneath the freaking RV. All day. All day long. We would try to bring her in and she would yeah. bark at the door to try to go back out again. She loved it. Look at her. No, she just... All right, guys. Um, if you want us to speak about something else, send me a message on Instagram. Uh, probably not Facebook. I don't check. Or if you Facebook don't want messages. it to us, tough. We're going to keep doing it. Oh so get over it. <laughs> or I think you can comment on Spotify. Not on iTunes. I don't think you can do it on Apple, but I'm pretty sure you can do it on YouTube and uh, Spotify. So... We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.